Hi everybody, welcome back to video number three for channel 3-0 drafts for Ravnica Allegiance. So we open a nice mythic rare, Seraph as the Scales. Uh, it's double color, but I still think it's better than uh, Skewer the Critics, which is the only takeable card in here. Uh, the upside the upside is significant on a card like this, so I think it's worth picking up in this spot. So now we have uh, kind of a mediocre rare with emergency powers and not, uh, I should say, mediocre mythic. Emergency powers is not really a good limited card. Uh, too much of a setup, I mean, for this to work. Like, even if you, here's the, here's the problem with it. So, I mean, for you to get the value of this, you gotta get the addendum. So you cast it on your main phase. So you dump your hand, your opponent dumps his hand. You guys both draw seven cards and you don't have the flexibility of playing out the things you want in your hand in the order that you want because you're tapped out. So you get one free one free card. And yes, it could be something that costs seven mana or less. Um, and I think there's like a time walk card that does that in one of the previous sets. And there are some other very powerful effects. But when you pass your turn to the opponent, he's gonna be untapped with seven cards in his hand and the flexibility to, to play what he wants, when he wants. So most likely after that interaction, you're gonna be behind. I'm just gonna take a Grotesque Demise, which is a really good card. Uh, it can, the cool thing about Grotesque Demise is the best, the, get, the way to get most value from it is you cast it targeting an opponent's creature, which is, uh, which has like an adapt trigger on the stack before he gets a plus one plus one counters. So you can knock somebody's creature out and uh, make him waste mana, which is kind of the idea behind effects like this with instant speed removal. I guess it's the same for Scorch Mark and everything else, but a lot of the more most of the adapt creatures I think have like uh, three toughness or higher. This is an interesting pick here. Biomancer's familiar is a bomb. It doesn't really go with the first two picks. I guess we can maybe splash Grotes demise, but not really. Uh, Seventeen seconds. So there's a Twilight Panther that we can take if we want to stay on this plan. Uh, we could abandon our first two picks and just take a Biomancer's Familiar and see if we can get past a bunch of good adapt creatures. I think I'm going to do that. I mean, there's also a chance I might build some crazy five-color, four-color uh, gate deck, which I've been meaning to do. Oh, and now there's a Ministrant of Obligation, which is very strong. I'm going to take that here. Afterlife 2, I mean, both Seraph has Afterlife 2 and Ministrant of Obligation has Afterlife 2. Afterlife 1 is quite strong. Afterlife 2 is, uh, I think, a level above that. You can use the creatures to chump big, stupid, uh, you know, Rakdos attackers uh, as you're bashing in the air uh, with flyers. It gives fodder to cards like uh, uh, Pitiless Pontiff, which we really want to pick up for this deck. Uh, there's also Titanic Brawl and Undercity's Embrace to go. Well, a Titanic Brawl to go with Biomancer is familiar, but I mean, if we're still being passed really good Orzhov cards, then I'm going to take a Ministry of Obligation. Easy pick. Okay, final payment. Sentinel's Mark and Ready to Battle. All playable cards. Final payment is better. Again, it's something that you can sack even Ministrant to get two flyers, keep bashing in the air. It's instant speed, so you could do it end of your opponent's turn and start bashing in with the flyers immediately, since they're not going to have summoning sickness. Um, I take a print screen. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. So yeah, final payment, great card. Much better than consigned that it does the same thing, more or less, but for far, far, far less mana. This is a gyre engineer. There's a blade juggler, an arrestor zeal, and I guess we could even consider a Steeple Creeper. I think this card's decent. It's better on Ragdolls. It's okay in Orzhov. I mean, with a card like this, I'm more likely to play the 1-3 flying, uh, what do you call them? The horse with the wings. Pegasus, thank you. Yeah, I mean, with a card like this, I'm more likely to play early cards that can get damage in. But 3 mana, 3-2 three, draw cards is quite good. I'm going to take it over the Gyro Engineer because it feels like what we're doing is a bit more open. Wow, now there's a Chillbringer, but I think we're a bit far from that. We're kind of 
going deeper and deeper into this uh, uh, into this Orzhov theme. Drill Bit's a really good card, but I think I need a Pegasus. This card's quite good. I mean, it could always it could often get in like you know five six points of damage over the course of a game. Um, I think I need more than the Death Touch creature right now. I'm not trying to build my deck around Blade Juggler, but I found that Orzov gets more than enough three drops. So really it's between Chillbringer and Concordia Pegasus. I'm gonna take the Pegasus. I'm gonna try to make a really good uh, Orzov deck. All right, immediately rewarded. Resolute Watchdog is very good. It can protect your bigger flyers. It's a bit awkward because on the one hand, like you don't mind your afterlife creatures trading since you're gonna get the, t the since you're gonna get the flyers. But, you know, a good card like Seraph of the Scales, I mean, you know, if you can give it Death Touch Indestructible, keep it hammering and keep it, keep it hammering for another turn, it's quite good. So Resolute Watchdog combined with Death Touch creatures kind of does the thing, same thing as Final Payment, uh, if that makes sense. And I think Orzov gets, has access to quite a few, um, to, to, to quite a few Death Touch creatures that we should be able to pick up later. So now it's down to Blade Brand or Arrestor Zeal. I think Arrestor Zeal is a little bit better. It's a way to kind of sneakily get a bunch of damage through for, for cheap. You could use it as just a cheap combat trick, so I'll take it. Okay, Impassioned Order is good. I do want at least one exposed to daylight always, but Impassioned Order is important for these types of decks. Uh, as you're trading off your creatures and you're getting the little flyers, you want to gain life. We're getting cut hard in black. So I'm not seeing any black cards flowing, which tells me that we could consider taking something like a Thought Collapse here or a Sage's Roast I don't think I want a second Arrestor Zeal. I don't think I want a Junk Troller. But I do want to hedge into blue just a little bit with probably just a solid two drop that lets me scry. And it looks like we're on the right path because we're getting rewarded. So Senate Courier is really good with uh, High Alert. It becomes a 4-4 flyer. It blocks a lot of the big flyers. Humongulus is also good, but I think this might be a bit better if we do end up going full Azorius. Okay, ready for battle. And happy to pick up a Humongulus and a Prying Eyes. So now the black cards are really under question. So if we kind of hop into Azorius Splashing Seraph, maybe even Splashing or Grotesque Demise, this is what the deck could look like. But I'm gonna leave everything in for now because it's not clear what, uh, what's flowing. Bestilent Spirit Mortify, interesting. Well, Bestilent Spirit is really cool with the uh, Gates of Blaze. We don't have any spells that deal damage right now. Think. Does this have flying? Three, four, ah, Menace Death Touch. I mean, Menace, Menace Death Touch is just a good card, but I think Mortify might still be better. Mortify is Mortify. Kill anything in some speed. We're just gonna take a Mortify. The Pest, Pestilence Spirit is good, and, and uh, to some extent, wow, we got a Tessa. That's exactly what we want for this deck. There's also an Ill-Gotten Ill Inheritance. I hope that Wheels or the Grasping Troll or even an Undercity Scavenger to sack one of the flying tokens would be good. But I mean, look, this is the way I see it. On the one hand, like you could try to get greedy and, and, and go, wow, Pestilent Spirit, you know, spell sub death touch, but we're not playing Rakdos. So facing reality, the, 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 the part of the card that says your spell sub death touch is for the most part irrelevant. So the only relevant thing that we have is that it's three for three, two menace death touch, which is quite good. It's very difficult to block. I mean, it's essentially unblockable, right? because it's guaranteed to kill two creatures on the pack, but there are some big, scary threats in Simic and um, uh, in Orzov that you absolutely need to deal with. And uh, Mortify does a good job of that, better than I think any other removal spell in the format. So uh, we're gonna take Tessa here. She doubles the number of tokens we get from our afterlife creatures, and we're now leaning more, leaning a bit back towards the uh, the Orzov theme. This is the final thing. And I have not tried this card. How many multicolor cards do we have? We have quite a few. So we have Seraph, Tessa, Mortify, Final Payment. We can get more. It feels a bit clunky, to be honest.
maybe I just want something like a, a final payment or even a Dead Revels is not bad in the deck like this where you can get back your afterlife creatures and just go infinite with afterlife. So let's see what this deck looks like if I take out the blue. I got 22 seconds, I got some time here. So if I take this out, I'm essentially just into pack two and I'm probably gonna have enough multicolored spells to go off with Tome. Let's try it. I mean, maybe you wanna splash something. Maybe I get the, uh, the uh, things that gives your opponents minus one, minus zero, and we would want to splash that off tone. Not exactly what you would call splashing on curve because we, it's, a, it's a five drop that we would have to play on six, if I'm not mistaken. You see, it's like five, we'd be three flying, and then your opponent's creatures get minus one, minus zero, if I'm not mistaken. So I think it's okay to pick this up here. Break the trial is good to have on the sideboard, but, but maybe I just wanted that revels more. Bringing back Watchdog, bringing back Ministrum, bringing back Seraph Tessa. I think this is really strong. I mean, if I can, if I can just bring stuff back and get double triggers, uh, I think Ill-Gotten Inheritance we can get later. It feels like people keep going back and forth on this card. Yes, it's good. Yes, it's cool. I mean, I've died with them on the battlefield many times. I think just this 3 for 3 3 spirit is stronger. I need creatures since I only have seven. And I need uh, I need to have I want to have at least like you know thirteen creatures to make that rebels better. And yeah, we're taking the bidding spirit. Yeah, blood fill, blood blood mist infiltrator is a, is potentially a finisher for our type of deck. It can kill uh, ministry. It can kill um, other afterlife creatures. How many afterlife do we have? So we have really just ministry and seraph, right? Not terribly excited with this card. I mean, it dies, it dies unfortunately to the uh, Blade Juggler. Uh, or the Dagger, sorry, the, the Dagger Caster. The Dagger Caster. So this, but it's still decent, whatever. I'll take it for now, we'll see what the deck looks like. Okay, so now there's an Orzov Yolgate and a uh, Grudian and the Chillbringer. Man. Chillbringer's so strong. You don't really have any, any ways of splashing. I think I'm just gonna get a take a gate. Make sure I can cast my spells. I think it's fair to take a gate from this pack. Yep. Dove Acuity. Yeah, potentially we can splash it. How many instants in sorcery? We have Arrestor Zeal, Final Payments. And it's not instant or sorcery, it's instant only. So we have Ready for Battle. We have a Mortify. We have a Grotesque Demise. This is a sorcery. We have Final Payment and when we have... Oof. No, I think we're just gonna take Undersea Scavenger to sack maybe some of the tokens. And Caracal in case of an emergency, or do I splash Swirl and Torrent? I think the power level on this card is so low, I'd rather just have this in case I have enough gates. Uh, play this as something I can splash. All right, I'll take an ill gotten Inheritance now. Potentially I play it. Yep, I mean with Tessa, this, this gives you four, four uh, flyers, so. Could be very strong. Screaming shield in case of some. I've really been meaning to find a reason to, to bring in screaming shield from the sideboard. I mean, ill gotten inheritance doesn't feel good. I mean, this this thing, this card reads as like, uh, you know, four mana, you get a one one unblockable life linker that you could sack for an additional effect. So I don't know if everybody's still split on how good this card is, but I am not comfortable playing two of these in my deck. Maybe I'll leave one in for now. I mean, six mana, it's not, that, it's not that six mana is restricted. The idea is that, you know, you just keep pinging with your flyers, keep draining, stabilize the board with your death, death touch creatures and dead rebels and, and then uh, just grind them out. I guess it could work. 
All right, mirror match is atrocious. There's really nothing for us, unfortunately, except maybe like an Azorius Gilgi. There's also an Angelic Exaltation, which could be strong. I love Deep Breaker Ram, but we're not doing a we're not doing a gate stack. Somebody's gonna be really happy picking that up. Vigilance and Trav. This card's stupid. I mean I like that they created this uh, gate archetype in both formats because I prefer the formats where you have all possible color combinations instead of just guilds. I feel like guilds are made for like newer players. And uh, I don't think ex like experienced players have problems navigating, you know, traditional two, three uh, color decks that we had like an Innistrad and Amon Cap, where you had cycling themes and, you know, minus one, minus one counters uh, and like black, green and some red cards in the, uh, in Hour of Devastation and uh, Amon Cap. I'll take, an, uh, I'll take an Angelic Exaltation. So I'm not sure what the idea is behind, yeah, this is the card I was talking about. Sorry, it's six mana. Six mana, but yeah, I definitely want it, and I'm gonna splash. I'm gonna try to splash this somehow. It's it's a very powerful card. Sphinx is stronger, but double blue is not realistic for us. But playing a playing a six mana five five that shrinks your opponent's entire board and negates their uh, negates their spirits. If it's a if it's a mirror match, letting your spirits get through, it's worth picking up. Yes, Spitalis Pontiff is exactly what we want. I'm really hoping that. Uh, the oligarch wheels and forget what i said about tome into azorius not being a good curve the tome into azorius is fine i mean you're, you're still casting it on turn six uh it's better if this costs like one last mana but it also draws your card along with uh and pitiless plant it also draws your card off tome so i think maybe tome makes the deck maybe it just does all right somebody's gonna have the nuts simic deck but we're gonna take i guess either knight or vampire and with a tome, I guess this is essentially a six drop. They can get us up to six tokens off Tessa. So I guess we take it. It's a good top end. Yep, Messenger is a filler. Not exciting. But maybe we, we dump it for like something like ready for battle. I don't really, I mean, untap. The untap part is cool, but. For it to really be good, your opponent's got to be tapped out so you don't get blown out. I think some good messenger is probably better main deck. All right, so I'm snapping this uh, Azorius Gilgate. There's nothing else that helps us splash our uh, Sky Guard. And we have enough playables. I'm not concerned about Undercity and Race with Final Payment Mortify. And uh, some Death Touch effects. So Azorius is fine. Azorius Gilgate. All right, second watchdog, second blade juggler. Hmm. Maybe I play the second watchdog over the um, over the instant. Again, maximizing creatures with the dead revels is uh, is good. Has the officer as a random three drop, I guess. If we want to load to the ground curve, crocodile is good as a sideboard card against the five six rumble belt recluse, which must attack every turn. Junk troller potentially, although unlikely. I don't think we're going to deck ourselves with Tome, but I think we are playing Tome because we ended up having enough uh, double color cards. And I do, I am in need of additional sources of blue for splashes. All right, last few picks. Guys, eyes everywhere, maybe. <laughs> Zarius Knight is great with high alert, but not something that's playable for us. So this is the deck. 
It's a bit clunky, but I think we can make it work. This is hopefully a three drop off Concordia Pegasus. A bit awkward with double resolute lodge dock for sure. I don't think there's anything that we can remove for swirling torrent. The watchdogs do power this angelic exaltation to some extent, but it's awkward when this is the only creature on the ground that can't really attack. And then you have this, what do you do? Concordia Pegasus, good. That has the Mayas Infiltrator. I guess Angelic Exaltation, Blood Mist Infiltrator is kind of a combo. Not crazy about the curve. Sideboard options, potentially Mungulus. Uh, sure. The Officers and the Zeal. I think I want to sit. Maybe I don't even play the first scavenger. What if we do this? Hmm. Like, I think it's okay to have one of these guys. It's like three for three, two to pump somewhere. Something you played earlier is okay. Uh, yeah, let's try like this. I think I want something slightly lower curve. And I guess the enter the battlefield ability is okay with uh, dead rebels. Scry two is cool, but. I think we can do better than having a five. There's, I mean, like, there's so much removal in this format that, it, you know, you often you find over-investing yourself into a card like this, and then it just ends up being bounced or dying. It's not good. I think maybe we can bring it in from the sideboard. So it's better to start here and then uh, keep it along with the second old god inheritance. Ready for battle? No, we don't really have any instant synergies. I think this is fine. Let's focus on creatures, focus on dead rebels. Uh, and let's see. So maybe you play. So this would be like the resources of blue. We go eight through seven. I have one more land. Probably another swamp. Seeing we want to, I guess, let me see how much white I have. So sort by color. Yeah, I do have quite a bit of white, don't I? Double white here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven black. No double black. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two islands for Azoria Sky Guard. So it's three and four off tome. That's oh, 18 lands. I gotta cut something. Hmm. I think we can cut a plane. Why is it saying? Ah, never mind. It's counting tome as a land. So that, that threw me off. Let's get the, let's get the plane back in here. We, we definitely want 17 lands. All right, one Orzov Gilgate, one Azorius Gilgate, two islands for Skyguard, potentially swirling toward, uh, as well on the splash. And I think we can jump in. Okay, so game one, three lands. We're on the draw. I think we can. I don't know. Do I send it back? We, I think we have enough. We have enough for at least stuff to make this work. So let's let's try to keep opponent malls. That should help us a little bit. Okay. 
Well, not what we need, but all right. Looks like we might be up against a Gates deck, which is always scary. Oh, can't play that quite yet. Let's just pass. Hopefully we'll get a swamp at some point. Okay. All right, so uh, probably final payment is the way to go here. I don't really want to trade my Pitiless, Pitiless Pontiff. Uh, and uh, potentially my opponent can make this thing fly over top. So I take five, but I, I, was, I mean, I'd take four anyway from this thing. So I do, I do need to get it off the board and then play probably Tessa. I maybe should have played around the counter spell. Let's see. Uh, yeah, getting countered is quite bad because I'm taking, I'm taking nine. Okay. I should have played that on my turn, but I think it's, I think it's fine. Coral Commando. All right. Well, that's not too, that's not too scary. We can beat a Coral Commando. Debt revels. All right, so now I'm incentivized to just block without even worrying about anything. Uh, two four should do a good job of keeping back a three two, unless he's got uh, some biomancy or a way to interact with the board. I prefer to test a die than go back to my hand because of dead revels. If I had to choose something, but let's see what my opponent does. Okay, Aramunculus is fine. No attacks, perfect. So now we can play Tome and then slowly start uh, getting advantage with a card draw through the rest of the game. So I'd rather invest in this now and then play Azoria Skyguard next turn and draw card. I wish I had more afterlife creatures for Tessa, but I think I have four, which should be enough. I got the 7-7, seven, seven, the 2-3, uh, Seraph and Ministrant. Sure. That's, that's actually perfect. So I take three. Next turn I play a uh, Skyguard draw card. No need for me to attack. I slow things down, play very conservatively. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, no, I still play as Aureus Skyguard. I want to play this now uh, so that I don't get countered. Let's draw a card. Okay. I left one white up for the guard dogs in case I in case I draw it so that I can play it now. Uh, this is good. It makes our opponent's creature smaller, but again, I'm not gonna get greedy. There's no need to attack. We're winning the long game between tome, between dead rebels. Everything else that our deck's doing, we're gonna. We just need to keep our uh, our life total as high as possible. So the worst card here is probably the the bounce spell, and Senate Courier is perfectly acceptable. Sure. No attacks. Okay. Ill-gotten inheritance could be good. I think maybe let's go Pillis Pontiff first. Draw a card, see what we get. Okay, so we got an island. Let's play that and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, X to six mana, so that means we can go ill-gotten inheritance and a blocker. I think that's perfectly fine. So let's go Pegasus. Ill-gotten inheritance and just show. Our opponent's down one card, and we have a brick wall that is very difficult to get through. And I think this is the point where we start taking over the game. No problem. Pitiless Pontiff can kill that easily, and we can even sack like a blade juggler, or we could double block. A 
test the mines, fine. So I don't really, uh, I guess uh, Blade Juggler still costs three because we, we dealt damage. So let's cast this with Spectacle now and see what we draw. Hmm. Okay, good. Seraph is good. We get to draw another card and then we get to keep up this, this card's uh, death touch ability. We can make some flyers, draw another card. Make a message here is fine. And we pass. Our opponent may just scoop. I mean, if I was sitting on the other side of the board, I'm really not sure how I, how I get through this. The, uh, I don't even mind like trading with Seraph and getting four one ones. They cannot attack until I kill Aeromunculus. Hmm. Uh, all right. Maybe. We... I'm not sure what's better to sack. So do I want to get like four one ones? I guess I can always, you know what? Let's just do it. I want to get four one ones. Does that have dead revels? I can, you know, I can get Seraph back later. And if I if I have like four one ones, it, it's going to be much more difficult for my opponent to continue attacking, given that I have an ill-gotten inheritance to just take care of it, take care for the rest of the game. I could even replay it next turn off dead revels draw a card if I really want to. And these things have vigilance and life links, so that's that's quite good. Okay, I'll an inheritance triggers again. Mortify is good. So I think I sandbag mortify. I'm not sure what's in the sand. I mean, I could try to like attack with the Zoria Skyguard and lure him into a bad block and then try to blow him out. He can't activate Steeple Creeper. This thing's useless, so he can try to double block. I could kill one of these blockers. So I so let's say he double blocks with the two Aramunculus. All right, I think I'm going to do that. So the goal is I attack with the Azorius Skyguard. He's going to be tempted to double block. He's got one card in hand. If it's a combat trick, so be it. I still might be able to respond. Actually, no, never mind. I have both Grotesque Demise and uh, Mortify. So I'm good. I'm actually good. I'm overthinking this. Uh, and yeah, let's just attack with this, see if he double blocks. Sometimes in a complex board state like this, you don't really see uh, what advantage you have immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he wants to block like that. That's fine. Let's play Syndicate Messenger and pass. So I'm representing a combat trick that I don't have basically, like a plus two, plus two. But he's not taking the bait. I have to be careful now. I can't go grotesque and mortify, but I don't think I need to. I think I just pass. Let's take, let's kill one of these because I want to start trying to get some attacks in. He needs to, he can't adapt it again. He needs either a, a pump spell or something or a counter spell. Okay, he's just pumping the other one, sure. Okay. Mortify will also draw us a card at some point. Has the officers actually good? So now I can attack with the Skyguard. Cannot trade the Steeple Creeper. Cannot block with Aramunculus. Uh, 
I'm going to keep Mortify for something a bit more threatening. So let's just play Officer, Pump, Skyguard, and get in. At some point, I'll probably be able to just start smashing with everything sooner or later. But again, with uh, ill-gotten inheritance on the board, draining for one every turn, we're, we're going to grind this thing out. I'm pretty sure we can just win by, by attrition. Hmm. So let's think about this. I guess I can start attacking with the Pitiless Pontiff and sacking some creatures. Let's do that. Let's attack with Pitiless Pontiff. Threatening to sack Syndicate Messenger for two more life linkers to set up a big, big turn where we can just get an all-in attack. Okay, so let's uh, pay one, sack. I guess let's sack one of these tokens. Yeah, Syndicate Messenger is probably still better for now. Because, because this way I'm essentially tra I'm trading the, the tokens for, for my opponent's cards. Gates of Blaze is the only card that really that can really get us, but even then I have Dead Revels and I still have Tome to draw cards. Okay, that's fine. He can't really attack. Yeah, he's just making it a 6-7, that's fine. Do I even need to Mortify? Probably not. I don't even want to waste Mortify. I'd rather save Mortify for a Flyer that I can get through. Uh, but what I can do here is I can kill Aramunculus, draw a card, and then get him with all my flares. That seems pretty good. Forbidding Spirit's okay. okay. So, Simic Adapt. That's some big, stupid, scary things. Rally for Battle seems to actually... <laughs> really good in this deck, so maybe it's a mistake not to main deck it even, but I feel like, I don't know, I guess I could cut one Resolute Watchdog against their opponent, it's not that great. Uh, I do like the has the Officer. I feel like a second all gotten there, this is so much better. In this specific matchup, it's really good. You can also bring in the Croc instead of like, Hmm. We can cut, like, we can play a croc and cut a blood, blood mist infiltrator. But can we make room for ready for battle? And are we missing any gold cards that we want to play for value off tone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Feels like we drew an above rate amount of cards off tone last game. We don't really have any other gold cards that we're missing out on. Don't want to screen chilled. Only card I kind of make, kind of want to make room for is ready for battle. Maybe it's better than like angelic exaltation, but probably not. I think I think we're fine. 
I think Angelic and Exaltation is still quite strong. Our deck is a bit dirty with three enchantments that do nothing on their, that do almost nothing on their own with uh, Ill-Gotten Inheritance. When I say Ill-Gotten Inheritance doesn't do anything, I mean you need to have a better setup. Like you need to have that touches on the ground, you need to have high toughness creatures, you need to have flying blockers, and then you can grind out your opponent. Otherwise, it's uh, almost a liability to some extent if, you're not, if your deck is not designed to support it well. Okay. So Impassioned Order goes first so that I can gain life off everything else I play. Sure. I don't know if my opponent's part has to mill me. If it is, I wish him good luck because I don't think that's going to work. If he wants to sink mana into milling me for one to make my uh, dead rebels better, that's fine. Okay, now we go, has the officer gain a life and then attack for three. Doesn't this guy look like the sparrow from uh, Game of Thrones a little bit? Any resemblance? Yeah, he had like some, he had some formal name. All right. So, I mean, it looks like opponent's playing a Gates deck, but we're not really seeing a Gates payoff. He might just be playing some weird four color deck. I don't know what's going on. Sad Courier is fine. So, I don't have attacks, but. Oh, well, I guess maybe I do have an attack, but I don't want to waste a final payment on something that my deck can uh, can take care of. I guess I just play Syndicate Messenger and pass. Gaining your life as well. Ill-gotten inheritance wouldn't be a good top deck here. Uh, wouldn't be sorry, it wouldn't be a bad top deck. I could start draining for one. Frenzy, frenzied Aranex, I can find a way to deal with. Sure. Transport's okay. Um, so some options. I mean, I can go Blade Juggler, draw a card, and, but then the double block. I guess I could set up a double block with like Syndicate Messenger and Juggler. And he doesn't have enough mana to pump Ernix. Uh, I could also go Pitiless Pontiff and then keep up Final Payment and keep up the Sack Ability. I think that's better, but I don't have double block, so maybe that's not good. So I guess I just Blade Juggler and then go for the double block if he wants to attack. I probably lose the flyer and then I gain life and then my graveyard uh, has cards I can bring back with dead revels once I once I find them. And playing a debtor's transport next turn is not bad either to get some additional flying uh, tokens to sack to Pitiless Pontiff. Ooh, Tess is very good. Tess is a great draw. Sure. Again, it's a bit awkward because all my cards are black and I only have one swamp, so it means I can play one black card per turn. And unless I draw a swamp here, I need to be selective with, uh, yeah, there's the Dead Revels. I need to be selective with what I play here. Let's say play Tessa uh, so that Syndicate Messenger can get me one more token in case some it gets killed. And I still gain a life and we just pass. 
If I found my other land, I would probably play Debtor's Transport, I imagine. Skitter Eel is perfectly fine. Okay, Orzog Gate's not bad. So now, uh, my only real play is like Pontiff, or maybe I want to keep up a final payment. Probably want to keep up Pitiless Pontiff, because that way I can start uh, sacking. I, I, can, I can now sack Syndicate Messenger for two two twos and kill a creature. It's pretty good. It's really good value. And also gain two life in the process, so. Uh, no attacks, no attacks. Our deck doesn't like attacking, it just likes just sitting and, and waiting for one of the two ill-gotten inheritances, which is what's gonna win us the game. Okay. Nice, okay. And Forbidding Spirit's also very good. And it doesn't require black, so that lets me keep up a final payment in case I need it. Debtor's Transport, I don't like because then all my mana stepped out. So I wanna definitely wanna keep up one for Pitiless Pontiff. So we just play this, keep up final payment, and then we keep up uh, the ability from uh, Pitiless Pontiff comboing with Tessa. Drawing to ill-gotten inheritances that are just going to grind out the game and win it for us. <laughs> My deck must be so annoying to play against. I, I seriously, I mean, if I was if I was OP, I'd be kind of like muttering under my breath, like, what the, you know, what the heck are you doing? So this turn, any attack is costing two more. So my opponent's just uh, playing creatures. It doesn't look like he's playing Gates of Blaze because I don't think he would play so many creatures. Okay, you want to adapt an attack? No attacks, okay. So if we get a land now, play Debtor's Transport, yep. Okay, good, so do I have any attacks? I guess I could kind of attack with like Fiddless Plantev, but what's the point? It's, there's no point, we just, we just hang back. So one, two, three, four, five. Doesn't matter, six. And this represents four flyers as well. And we just keep, keep grinding. Not much more to do. Okay, no problem. So maybe he can start attacking here with the flyers. I guess he can, right? Uh, I could sack like debtors transport in response and throw all the uh, all the tokens in front of Aramunculus. That's one option. Let's see what he does. Okay. All right, I see what you're doing. So. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sack We're going to sack debtor's transport. We're going to get four life linkers and we're going to throw them all in front of the Senate courier, gain a bunch of life. Here we're gaining four life to be exact. And then we're gonna gain four more from the lifelink, losing one of them to a courier. Uh, alternatively, what we could do is, we could probably double block like, like this. So one, two, three, four, 
five. What kind of combat trick you can have? You can have the plus one, plus one counter combat trick. You can also have the plus three, plus three. So if he has a plus three, plus three, this goes to seven, and it's two, three, four, five, six. That would be a big blowout. So there's only one combat trick that he could have that can really blow us out. And even then, it's not like the worst because I get two, two flyers back off Syndicate Messenger. Let's see what he does. Okay, so he's opting to kill my spirits, it looks like. So I go up to 34. I wish I had that mythic card from uh, uh, Battle for Zendikar that wins you the game if you have more than 50 life or something like that. <laughs> familiar, something familiar, I think. Or no, it's like Sovereign. It was like, uh, I'm gonna find this card, one second. Yeah, it's like Familiar, Sovereign, Felidar, I knew there was something with an F in there. Yeah, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 more life, you win the game. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we can't, we're not going to spike that. Uh, so let's see, we play Tome. I don't want to play Final Payment just for the sake of drawing a card. Time-wise, we're about the same. So let's just go Tome, one, two, three, four, five. And let's... Pass, keeping up final payment, uh, plus the ability from Pontiff. You should keep an eye on the clock for grindy matchups like this, and we're about even on the clock. Sure, play, play all the Aranexes you want. I don't think that's going to help. Uh, do we even need to play a Swamp? We don't need to play a Swamp. No, we just pass. We're just hanging out. Sure. So that's a good target that we can final payment. That's a, that could be a threat. I mean, five five flyer is something that I can't deal with right now. Uh, but final payment can can kill it, and I could certainly afford to five life. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> There's our win condition. Also, the Angelic uh, Exaltation could be very good if we tau deck it. We could use it on Pontiff and just start hammering. I'm not gonna slow roll let's just kill it now. Ooh, Skyguard's a good top deck. Now my opponent has no... Uh, so after I cast Azoria Skyguard, my opponent has no creatures with flying that have power greater than zero, unless he's got four mana up for Creeper. So let's go Skyguard. One, two, three, four, five, six. Draw a card. Now we can like just start chipping away. So we'll attack with this and this. And I keep Pitalus Pontiff back probably. So this gets him four. So this gains me like, actually I don't need to attack. This just gains me one life. Basically is all it does, which is also fine. I think he's... He's forgetting to use this ability. Oh, he hasn't milled me once, and I have 17 cards left, so... Potentially, this thing is a win condition. He's just kind of disregarding it.
you know, with him being at 15 life, me having one ill-gotten inheritance and another one somewhere in my deck, I don't think it's going to be enough for him to mill me out. Really? Really? All right. Uh, he wants to just push through trample damage. I guess that's fine. Uh, okay, not sure what that does. So basically, this lets him push through like what six trample damage. That's okay. That's fine. I'm not really that much worse off as a result of this transaction. The Pontiff doesn't die. I absorb two. I basically take four because I absorb two the trample. I guess, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're a opponent, you got to do something, right? You can't just, I probably would have maybe just used the, the mill option. So I'm going to keep Dead Revels in my hand. I don't need to, I don't really need to use it to get back uh, mediocre cards. I'd rather keep it to get back like Fiddless Pontiff if somehow my opponent finds a way of killing him with an exile effect. That would be the only way to do it. Ministry of Propagation is also good. And I can, I can just gain some life here with my little flyers. Uh, actually, I can attack with the Zori Skyguard as well, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, he's got, he's got my flyers. So this way I actually get a little bit of damage through as well and help with the, uh, with the, race, with the race situation. Pitless Pontiff, I guess I could attack with it as well. Even kill Seraph and get it back. Let's do that. That would be quite nasty. I'm going to sack Seraph, get it back. And, re and recast it. <laughs> One, two, yeah, I could do everything, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Yeah. <laughs> Still take. That's, of course, if he blocks Pitless Pontiff. If he doesn't block it, then I don't really need to. That's fine. That's fine. Well, Angelic Exaltation would give my creatures plus 12, plus 12 right now. Uh, so let's go. All right, so now he can keep up, so he can make this a flyer. So this could be a 3-2 flyer. So that means I can't really attack with my life linkers, but I can attack with Seraph. I can get a Zori Sky Skyguard back if he blocks it. This is fine. You know what? That's fine. If he wants to, I mean, if he wants to eat one of my one of my tokens, that's okay. Because I'm pretty sure I have this, I have this lock now right now. Between Dead Rebels and everything else, this is this is good. So most likely what he does here is he's gonna he's gonna give this flying. Or I wouldn't have done that. No effects. All right, I guess opponent's kind of just maybe giving up on this game. Nope, nope, he's got something. What is it? 
minus four minus zero on the pontiff. Okay, okay, that's fine. I don't mind that. So then he takes two. All right, perfect. Pass. All right, he, gain, he gains uh, eight life. So now mill is a legitimate risk for me. He could start milling me, so I need to probably go dead revels now and just try to overrun him. <laughs> this is kind of changing the game a little bit. This is changing the dynamic of the game. So now I need to, I need to think. I definitely want to attack with Seraph. That's, that's a given. Do I want to attack? I can attack with Azori Skyguard as well, but he can just blank it with one of these. Let's, I think, let's just attack. Probably chumps with one of the couriers. That's, that's my, my guess. I could have given him Vigilance, but I guess I, I'm a bit distracted because we could lose. I mean, this, he's not seeing the, the mill trigger from this. Takes it. Okay. And now he sees it. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I got all the top deck to mortify. That's kind of annoying. I'll probably use a mortify on the pestilent uh, persistent uh, petitioners. What do we got? <laughs> all right. Let's give this thing vigilance. Pay one. If I attack with this, he eats one of them. I don't think I have to worry about mill quite yet, but actually, no, I'm still going to attack because I have the, I have a Concordia Pegasus, so that can get in for additional points of damage as well. Whoa, why? That's frustrating. Uh, okay. Must not have clicked on one of them. So he's going to eat two of my, he's going to eat both of my Vigilance guys and take four or maybe chump with a Senate Courier. Aha, perfect. Okay, good. So now this gives me four, four additional flyers and this is going to help with the race. So after life two, I have a ridiculous amount of life. So now I think I'm going to use uh, Dead Rebels. So back Seraph and Better's Transport. Pay two. Replay Seraph, one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, so I think we do need to make room for this thing. Because in every game that we played, we had such a sick board state to where it would have been, uh, it would have made an all-in attack possible. And I think I kind of watched dog for it. Somehow we haven't drawn a watch dog once. <laughs> I guess it's something that we can win without. Uh, second ill-gotten inheritance. Can we make room for it? It's probably better than a blood fist infiltrator, blood mist infiltrator. 
So I think this is the new configuration of the deck that we're gonna go with. Uh, yeah, I think this is correct. One is playing 41 card special. I guess you must have so many good cards that it's difficult to figure out which one you want to cut. You know, sometimes I end up doing this and I feel like a hypocrite a little bit criticizing the opponents to do it. But the reason not to play more than 40 cards is because one of your cards has to be worse than your best card. And by keeping a mediocre card, you're delaying how quickly you can draw to your better card, if that makes sense. So don't play 41 card decks. Not recommended. The only time that I can think of to do that is if your opponent's playing a mill strategy and if you're gonna counter it, then just bring in like, you know, play a 60 card deck, play a 40, play, play like a 50 card deck. Don't play a 41 card deck. You gotta have a reason why, uh, you know, you, you want extra cards that aren't necessarily going to help you. Our opening hand's a bit awkward. We have one creature and well, two debtors transfer. It's not something we can cast quickly. I need to find like a, some more two drops or three drops to make sure that we can we don't fall too far behind, uh, but final payment should help us uh, at least stabilize a little bit. Fiddless Pontiff. Hmm. I don't want to trade for Plague White, but I will play Pitiless Pontiff here so that I can at least attack next turn and uh, keep up with the race. Most certainly I do not want to offer the trade because uh, Pontiff is one of my best cards, given how many afterlife effects I have. So I'll just take it and let's see what we got. Burning Tree Vandal is at three, two, okay. Well, uh, hmm. I will offer the trade because I don't want him looting. I think we can manage. Uh, okay, so he didn't even he didn't even go for the block. Okay, then I pass, and then uh, beginning of combat, I final payment uh, burning tree devil. Looting is a powerful effect. I mean, it's essentially drawing like half a card. I don't want my opponent doing that. So we're going to just pay five, kill it. And we go to 11, but hopefully we can stabilize at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna play has the officer and keep up one mana to trade uh officer for amplifier. We're not gonna attack here. We don't know what our opponent's gonna reveal. Uh but we Definitely want to make sure we can trade. So it doesn't matter what we pump, we're not attacking, we're just passing. And trying to set up for a trade. Yep, that's exactly why. So 
So first we block. If he has uh, the exile creature with power three or less, it's a blob, I might as well concede. But it looks like he did not have it. I'm actually glad that I didn't trade a uh, Pontiff for the Plague White because uh, this, this would have been a fast lock. Really cool card design. So I'm going to discard Angelic Exaltation because I don't think it's going to help me win this game. So I'm all ready for battle to eat after demon on, on blocks. We definitely want another watchdog in, in our deck to stop the Earth Beats in Arachnos deck like this. I'm gonna try to a way of, uh, I'll try to think of a way of lowering the curve so that we can keep up. A land would be really good for debtor's transport here. Dagger caster would be bad. Uh, Recluse. Well, again, ah, man. So I can go to one. There's where you scale gate. Tome. Can't do anything else. We uh, trade with Plague White, and then hopefully we can. He needs to not have a play next turn. So most likely we're dead here because if he can play any creature, then it's pretty much game over. And if he has removal, it's game over. Let's snap this block off, go to one, and please play nothing. I'm not sure, like, I guess maybe if I have some, like, Mortify. No, that, that wouldn't do it. I mean, he plays anything else in this game over. Yeah, it's game. All right. So fast, aggressive Rakdos deck. What do I have that can counter this? I think Ready for Battle's coming out. Oh, sorry, no. Angelic Exaltation's coming out. And I think this 3-2 is good. And I want to play Watchdog, and I want to play Arrestor's Zeal. So what does that mean that we're taking out? I think we're taking out Knight. I think we're taking out... We want to play this crock also. The juggler's okay. Now maybe we cut the combat trick. The watchdog doesn't do a good job of blocking um, the white. But it does do a good job of stopping other low to the ground, early uh, ragdoll stuff. But while we haven't seen it, our opponent, there's a good chance he's playing it. I also want to remove any X1 creatures if I have it. I don't think I have any. The Blood Mist Infiltrator is already out. What is the worst card in our deck? Maybe one El Godman here, because I think two of these are a bit greedy against our opponent. Uh, it's just not going to be enough. One's enough to stabilize and kind of 
you know, wear him down after uh, he just, you know, dumps his hand. I think this is our best chance to win, something like this. Maybe I could even like splash a humongous, but I think the catacomb crocodile does the same thing. And it's more mana consistent. Actually, it's better because it just it just blanks the Rumble Belt Recluse and uh, can force a trade for like a much weaker, much weaker card that you have on a double block. Because the Recluse must attack every turn, so you block with like a croc and like a random 2-2. And then you just you trade it six by four two two. Okay. So probably one of the best cards I can draw is the uh, impassioned order. Just as something that can start gaining life, gaining me life, any time I play a creature. All right, tap land. I'm happy to see that. Do not want to see an early uh, one drop. That's actually really good for next turn. Forbidding spirit is going to help. It just significantly increases chances of me winning the game. I hope I don't even have to play it now. I want to play it later. Because now it's only going to stop like, um, I want to play it anyway, but I was going to say like, if I play it now, it only blanks uh, haste creatures because the spear is not on attacker. You just tap him to deal one to everything. And while spewer enables my opponent's uh, spectacle, I don't want to say it's necessarily good because I have a lot of life gain and a card like that may end up doing more damage to our opponent than it could to us. Pestilent Spirit is scary, so I am going to Mortify. It. Um, but I should offer the trade first. So let's let's attack. See what he wants to do. I can't block it anyway because of Death Touch Menace. So now I'm just going to play Syndicate Messenger and pass. I want to see Mortify for something that's a slightly bigger threat. Yep. I want to hold off playing Mortify for as long as possible. So I think next turn I'll probably just keep these guys back for double blocks to trade off with Pestilence Spirit and then get them back with Dead Revels. Doesn't seem very good because I wasted a turn playing Dead Revels like for four mana. Uh, and I'm trading, I get a 1 1 out of the deal, but it doesn't seem, it still doesn't seem good. Because I'm trading seven mana and two cards for one card. Then using another four mana to get them back. No, we're not going to double block. Never mind. That's a bad idea. Okay, so um, this is the punch card, right? Thrash Threat. Okay, so in two turns we can play Azoria Skyguard. Now we just uh, hang back. I should probably use Mortify on Pestilent Spirit now. I'll explain the logic. I mean, the reason why I'm doing this is because there are some like random 
cards that ping you for one in Rakdos. So while I do want to see Mortify for something better, given that I have a way to cast Azorius Skyguard, I'm a bit less concerned about what my opponent's doing. And uh, I just want to make sure I don't get blown out by, uh, by like, not blown out, but I, I don't want my Syndicate Messenger to die to a lower range of cards. Yeah, sure, I can discard a plane, no problem. All right, well, I cannot cast Skyguard here, but this is fine because I can catch, I can cast uh, Watchdog. He can block Feral Maka, and then I can trade with their after human. Really close game. Uh, opponent's got a good deck, good cards. Yeah, like Thrash Threat. Good card. The other part, Instant Speed. Where's the preview? It's a preview. I'm pretty sure it's instant. Oh, it's sorcery. Never mind. Yeah, sometimes they have these that half of this is an instant, half of it is a sorcery. Uh, all right, I hope I get a land so that I can play Skyguard now. No attacks. Okay, good. Ugh. I'm not sure if he's going to activate the Cold Guild Mage's ability. If he does, I can probably just dump Dead Revels because uh, Skyguard is still better. But I still want to play the Resolute Watchdog because... Yeah, I, th I think I can stabilize quite well if I can just get another land and play Azorius Skyguard. I don't regret dumping the land to Raptor Demon's ability. And I think he's not he's not gonna make him discard. Most likely Cold Guild Mage is just gonna keep pinging because my opponent is more interested in getting my life total down than he is in making this card cards. Because he's thinking I'm probably you know hoarding a land. I have five lands out. He doesn't know what I have. Perfect. I'm not sure why he's not attacking me. He should attack. No attacks. Fine. Not the droid we're looking for, but let's play it anyway. Hmm, interesting. I need to start attacking with a flyer now.
this will make it uh, harder for him to use the spear spear because now he's actually, well, we're even. I mean, as of this turn, we're even. He's gonna ping me with cold guild mage before the end of my turn, unless he forgets to do it. it Will be nice if he forgets, sometimes people forget. Nope, no chance. So I'm at six. What can I do to gain life? Ooh, special order. That's really good. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm attacking with, I'm attacking with flyers. I need to, I need to get him to where he cannot use spear spear. So this is five to the face. And then we go. Now we go impassioned oracle order, sorry. And we're back up to nine with Seraph. Perfect. I think it probably spewers us anyway because I have three flyers, so it's no point. Uh, and trying to maintain his life total because he's dead next turn anyway, and he's only got one shot to kill me. Yep, perfect. Man, tough deck, tough deck. How do we win? I'm almost tempted to take out Tome of the Guild Pack, but I needed to splash the Zoria Skyguard. I was going to take out Tome of the Guild Pack for another uh, Ill Gotten Inheritance, but it doesn't seem very good. I think, right, let's run it back. I think, honestly, like we won with one of the worst draws that we could have. We didn't draw any of our early stuff, we didn't draw any of our bombs. So maybe we could just win if we have a slightly better draw. Eh, it's whatever. All right, all right. Ill Gotten Inheritance is not bad in our opening hand. I would have liked a two drop instead of like an extra plane, but you can't always get what you want. Okay, Pitless found it is good. Very good. Plague white. I think this time I will just snap off a trade with the Pitless Pontiff for the Plague White. I, I, my goal is, against this particular deck, my goal is just to maintain my life level as high as possible. It's not the same as in game one where Pitless Pontiff was like a, something that blanked our opponent's board. Here, we just want to, we just want to trade. Any offer we have to trade, I'm taking. Even if it means this officer is just a 3 for 3 turn, I don't, I don't care. I want to stay 20 for as long as I can with the Nil Godman Karen in my hand. Go ahead. That's perfect. Yep. I just trade off everything.
Also to note, my opponent's uh, about six minutes behind on the clock, so I don't think it's going to matter because this is game three anyway. I don't think a game against Rackles typically goes that long, but you never know. Yes, no attacks. Woohoo! Now we got a chance. Now we got a chance. Yes, slam that. Slam that. <laughs> The one card our opponent does not want to see. He's like, I would have been like, ugh. Just, ugh. So my guess is he didn't attack with a hacker bat because he wants to offer the trade, uh, the Feral Maka. I'm perfectly fine offering that trade. I could even just take two if he attacks with Feral Maka. And uh, keep Officer. Maybe, yeah, let's see how he attacks. If he attacks with both, I'll trade for hacker bat. If he's just attacking like this, I mean, I'm at 19 with uh, all got the inheritance. I'm taking one. I don't care. This is one damage for me. Resolute Watchdog is perfect. So I can block Maka and then sack it to trade with Rafter Demon or Hackerbat. Probably Rafter Demon. Just because Hackerbat, you got to sink mana into it to make it a 4 1. Yep. All right, so let's go lock here, lock here, and then sack watchdog to protect the marshal or officer. Take two. Mortify is good, but we're going to play Azorius Skyguard first. This way, the juggler can't attack, the Maka can't attack. He can only attack with the Hacker Bat, unless he has removal for Azoria Skyguard. If he has removal, it would be nasty, but I still think it's better to be just more mana efficient and play it out. Keep your fingers crossed that he doesn't have removal and hope that we can lift the setup Mortify at some point. Sure. Yep, no problem. No problem. This is perfect. Concordia Pegasus is also good. Zero cards. Yeah, he's not even pinging with the Spear Spear or so. He understands that he's in a bit of a predicament. So the question is, like, he can make me this card on his turn. So maybe it's better to use Mortify now. Because, I mean, if I draw something that costs more than one, two, three, four, five, if I draw something that's like four mana or more, it could be essentially a wasted card if he's going to make me this card. So 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this. I guess it doesn't seem like a good play, but uh, this hedges. Yeah, like I, I would have had to discard this, so I'm actually happy I did it in retrospect. I don't see a need to attack. Let's just let's just chill, play this, hang back, offer trades, and keep grinding with uh, ill-gotten inheritance. Sure. Yeah, Azori's Sky Guard is just MVP. This this card won us the game along with Del Godman Inheritance. Clearly. Okay. I really hope he starts using Spears Pure, but it looks like he's not uh, excited about that idea. So some of the cards that could blow us out, like if he has the rare Rakdos Demon. That could be bad. Um, I guess it's a five six, so I can still like triple block. But it would be scary because it's like it could wipe half my board. What is he killing? All right, he's killing his Sky Skyguard. All right, what does that mean for us? Let's see. I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, I can trade with most things. I'm, yeah, I, I can make trades. This is fine. He really doesn't have good attacks. Like, if he wants to just trade things off, I'm perfectly fine. Especially if he wants to trade, trade off the Burning Tree Vandal. Yeah, so that's okay. Okay. Ooh, I'm snap snapping the block on Burning Tree Vandal. So actually, the uh, Dead Revels wouldn't be bad here. All right, let's make some trades. So trade. Trade, oops, sorry. Uh, trade, trade, take three. Let's see if he starts uh, using Spear Spear now. Ah, still not, still not using it. <laughs> All right, six minutes also could win on time theoretically. Uh huh. No, I don't think he want to attack like that. Yeah. Ah, he <laughs> he didn't pay the two. I think he wanted to attack, but uh, he f misclicked. All right, so now I think the game's officially just ran away from him. With debtor's transport, unless he has a way of exiling it, I don't think there's anything so, and there's no enchantments in the colors that he's playing. So with the two lifelink, with the two uh, spears that we're gonna get, uh, it's, we pretty much have this game on lockdown. I must say that the deck has been very generous to us in terms of draws. Because we drew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 13 non lands. So, you know, as much as people complain about like being mana screwed, you should also understand when you're like the opposite of that and appreciate it when that happens, if that makes sense. So, from here, I think what I want is an Azorius Skyguard and a Pitless Pontiff.
Now let's bounce. All right, now I'm gonna start attacking with probably Concordia Pegasus and the Spirit. Uh, ooh, Rally for Battle. No, we don't, we don't need, we don't need Rally for Battle. Let's just, let's just attack with the Flyers to really put this game out of reach. Okay. So, on to the finals with one loss, great deck. We'll just have another look before we jump in. If we want to change anything, I don't think we'd so get okay. Yeah, so this is the configuration. We're playing Rally to Battle, two old Goblin Inheritances. The only problem with this deck is that we're clunky on our four drop slot, but it's enough mid range to where we can get away with it, I think. Uh, and yeah, and Dead Revels is really like a two drop, right? Let's be optimistic. With two Goblin Inheritances, you should be able to cast this for two mana most of the time later in the game to get back our game winning bombs. Uh, Knight could be considered greedy, but having a Tome uh, makes it so that it's still justified to play it going into the finals. Because Tome lets us like ramp and draw a card off. Uh, Night of the Legion, I guess. Oh, Night of the Last Breath. Hmm. Let's send this back. I'm not, I'm not crazy about this hand. This is better, let's keep it on top. We have, we have enough lands, we should be able to find something sooner or later. Our opponent mulls as well. Yep, perfect. I mean, there's just such a big risk that our, our hand's not doing anything. And when, you, when you're in the finals, like, chances are you're playing a good deck. Like, maybe you can get away with that, like, match one, game one, and then just hope to find your mana. But in the finals, I found that uh, you should be a lot more selective about what hands you mull with three lands when you're missing your color. And it was, I think, perfectly justified to do so last game. So we're gonna go uh, order into Pegasus. So it could be a mirror match. Now I think regardless with, with like, with our deck, I, I prefer to gain one than deal one. So, I'm playing Order. Also, there's a chance he plays a tap land or misses a two drop, and we can get in for two anyway. All right, let's first attack. If he trades, that would be beautiful. I don't think he will, and then we can play Blade Juggler. Yep. If you watched my video number two, uh, where I went 3-0 with a Rakdos deck, I think it was a mistake not to play, play Juggler in that deck. I still 3 0 but I went back and reviewed the, the tape and the tape. Dating myself a little bit there. Uh, yeah, I went back and reviewed the, the, the video recording and I think I should have played, played Juggler in that deck. Okay. Right, I'm going to play both Pegasus and Pitless Pontiff pre-combat to gain the life. And we're attacking with everything. The reason why I don't want to take a conservative approach to this game is because I have a rally for battle. So my opponent's behind, he's got one card, most likely he trades with the Blade Juggler now. 
And we can really just uh, push through a lot of damage. Okay, that's fine. So exile one card, kill the other one. The, what I would like ideally to happen. <laughs> ah, okay, so I can untap Concordia Pegasus with uh, Rally from battle, and then you could eat the Spike Wheel Acrobat. Okay, I'm gonna attack with both. I hope that he trades with the Pitiless Pontiff. He probably won't think that he can, set, he can crack back for five. And then uh, I can maybe get him with a Rally for battle, untapping the Pegasus as a two six to eat the Acrobat. I am exposing myself for a two for one, but it's not the worst because if my opponent wants to, if my opponent kills a creature, I can get both back with Dead Revels, draw a card of Blade Juggler, and then hopefully we make our opponent waste his turn. If he plays a removal spell, the two for one in here. Mm hmm. You know what? I, I'm still going to block. I don't want to take five damage. I can get cards back from my graveyard. Against Rakdos, I want to keep up a high life total, so... Yes. Yes. So good. So good. <laughs> well, MTG has been good to me today. What can I say? What can I say? Rumbling Ruin. Mm. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's a beating. I'm going to take some damage. Um, but I could probably, if I get a land, I can go Dead Revels, Pontiff, Concordia Pegasus, and no, I still, it's still not good enough. Fortunately, that's not good enough. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a, I'm going to have to take some beats. So let's go, I guess. Juggler, Pontiff. Pay two. And then let's play Juggler first. Maybe we draw one of our watchdogs and it's just more, more mana efficient turn progression. Final payment's good actually. We can we can final payment draw Lingo next turn. Let's pass. Rumbling Ruin's a bit awkward to play in a deck like this because there's not too many plus one plus count one counters in Rakdos. So essentially you're playing it just as a uh, six six for six often. But life field is fine. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we play Pontiff. Keep up final payment. And hang back. I would rather treat uh, Blade Juggler for the Rumbling Ruin than a final payment. Got a bonus, fine, not a problem. Mm -hmm. No need to use final payment here. 
Ooh, that's good. So let's go one, two, three. Makes life difficult, for, uh, a little harder for our opponent. Wow, okay. I think that's a bit premature, but uh, I guess it's our opponent's call. So six, six, I want a Catacomb Crocodile. Angelic Exaltation is coming out, it's too slow. All right, so we do need to make some decisions. So do we want another like watchdog, another officer? Again, two ill-gotten inheritances, I think a bit greedy. Maybe just like a, this 3-2 that can trade for pretty much everything they're playing is better. Watchdog's not good against the 2-2 death touch that those decks often play. This is the only cut. How good is Rally? Well, Rally, Rally for Battle kind of saved our butt, and he knows we have it. He might, like, the, the, the thing about these cards is, even if we take it out, our opponent may still have to play around it. You know what, let's, take it, let's just take it out for like a watchdog. I think, I think that's better. It just might be a bit too slow and clunky against uh, an aggro Rakdos deck like this. I'd rather have a one drop that can keep the ground down. Perfect, all right, I'm gonna call it. I think we just got the, with this opening hand, I think we got it. As long as we don't get mana screwed. But uh, yeah, this means, I mean, this, this, mean, this hand means I'm guaranteed to make plays for at least three turns, which is uh, often something that just completely negates uh, negates your opponent's plan. Like they just can't they can't beat it with a, with a Rakdos deck. A bunch of one threes, two two indestructible cards. I just need land literally, and then we're good. Land, land, eh, not land. We got we got one more turn to find something. Still gonna play Pitiless Pontiff. If he has like Scorch, Scorch Mark, so what? So be it, he has it. No Scorch Mark. Okay. We can double block that with two dogs. Yeah, we're getting a little bit screwed on mana, of course, because I had to see him pull on it. But again, an opening hand like this means that we can often just uh, Uh, slow things down enough to stabilize because Ministrant of Obligation is really going to mess with mess with our opponent's plan. And of course, I'm very happy that I lowered the curve. Even if we lose it, we go to game three. So uh, I'm not I'm not too concerned. But if we get one more land, and we can if we can play the Marshals and the Ministrants. I'm going to double block with the dogs instead. So opponent's thinking, so it looks like he's got something. Maybe he could have the first strike card, in which case he could kill one of them. Plus one, plus zero, and scry one. Okay, okay. Draw test demise uh, on the pontiff. That's fine. And, this, and secure the critics. Okay, okay. Well, uh, this is a bit awkward. Missed another land drop. I did say if I can hit my lands, did I not, right? <laughs> you were... That's it. Oh, at least our opponent's not doing much either. 
Turn five, still nothing. Yuck. <laughs> so what a joke. What a joke, seriously, come on, come on. Don't, do I have to go and calculate the odds of this again? Do I have to do this exercise? What am I dumping? I need to dump a... I guess the crocodile makes sense. If we win this off, like, missing five line drops, it'll just be absolutely ridiculous. Sure. We can mortify this if we can hit a land, so I'm not terribly concerned, but we do need a land. Oh my God, come on, man. <laughs> what a joke. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand, like, he must have, our opponent's getting flooded. That's like the only thing that's saving us. But uh, yeah, we're dead. I mean, I don't think I can win, honestly. I mean, I can mortify one of these things. Uh, let's pass. But it's just, yeah, it's too, too late, too late. I needed that land literally just one turn earlier and it would have been a completely different outcome. So I'm at four, I'm at three, and do I have a way of trading? No, I do not. All right, let's just not waste any more time. All right, so he's playing some fatties. Uh, I'm not changing anything. This deck is like perfectly optimized for what my opponent is doing. I just need to hit my third land a little bit earlier and then maybe I can have a little bit of a different outcome, but that was just absolutely, that was wrong. We, we were robbed. We were robbed of our tro trophy right there. By the way, I did not realize that this thing is 10 bucks. Apparently people are playing it. I'm not sure in what format. Angels deck, mid-range angels. Uh, hmm. So I mean, look, even if we lose, we're already ahead uh, because this thing like, whatever, eight tickets, eight tickets, eight and a half tickets. So I'm not gonna be too disappointed, but I definitely want that three, you know, come on. Uh, we worked too hard, way too hard. And I'm not spoiling this draft either way. Mm, I do want to play first simply because I don't want my opponent to play first and this is much better. Yeah, much better. So Pitalis, Pitalis Pontiff uh, on turn two. Hmm, interesting, do I play my gate or the watchdog? That's a that's an interesting choice. The watchdog can't really attack, so there's no benefit in playing him on turn one. So then I play the guild gate. So if he plays a one drop, then I'll play the watchdog. If he doesn't play a one drop, then I'll just play the guild gate. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm playing first. Never mind. Never mind. So just play the gate and pass. I guess that's what I would have done if I was on the draw. Mm -hmm. I think my opponent kept a questionable hand because he thought about mulliganing and he did not. So let's see what he does here. 
No tax. Good. Uh, Nothing. Okay, so he might have the exile spell. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to push here because I, I have a pretty good hand. I can cast everything. I have action for the next four turns guaranteed. So he's probably gonna exile this thing. I don't think he's gonna block him. Uh, oh, perfect. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now we're gonna have the syndicate messenger, and we can hit for four turn. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> blocking was probably not necessary then in that case, but that's fine. All right. Uh, yeah. So in that case, we just play the syndicate messenger. Next turn, we can go officer, hit for three, and play another watchdog. Or even just keep up the watchdog's ability to protect the messenger if we want. Okay. And it looks like opponent is stuck on three lands, so this might be, I guess, some uh, sort of, <laughs> what do you call it, uh, justice for, for last match. Not that I'm cheering for my opponent to be mana screwed, but, you know, fair is fair. <laughs> I'm just going to keep up the Resolute Watchdog uh, to trade uh, or to, to, you know, protect my flyer in case he's got a removal spell. All right, so some spectacle effect coming up. Mm -hmm, no problem. No problem at all. Let's keep, let's just keep jamming here. So, I'm not gonna attack with the second has the officer because it's not really good trading for gutter bones. Uh, and if he has removal for one of my guys, like if he has another exile card, I wanna make sure that I can still block the five two. Probably good enough to trade the, the watchdog. Although, I mean, if he has removal, I could get blown out, right? So let's just trade like this. I don't like it when he has mana up. Okay. Another one, sure. Okay. And land is good. Let's just keep hitting with the messenger. I think I think opponent's playing as well as he could given that he's stuck on three lands. So let's play this. Now we can play the watchdog. We have mana to sack both of them if we need to. 
and one more lane, we get a debtor's transport. And then uh, I think if my opponent misses a land drop here and then I make my land drop, very hard for him to come back from, from that situation. So fingers crossed. I don't really like I don't like games that are won on mana screw or lack thereof. Uh, I like games where you get to kind of like just play out your decks and see who's got you know the better deck configuration and everything else. Right, concession. Well, we got there. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you next time. Uh, this is trophy number two, and at some point I plan on recording a PTQ sealed once I have enough trophies. It's not going to be anytime soon, but. Hopefully I can start sharing some of those videos as well, at least once every two months or so, once I collect enough three knows. See you next time.